All right, so last fun thing I want to show you is how to load in a text file. So for in analyzing the Anderson data, we'll be having to load various text files into prot, or sorry, into R, including text files that have acoustic measurements from prot or information about the stimulus properties. So you may have noticed when I looked at, oops, the Google Drive folder that contained this um, R notebook file. Let me navigate to it over here. Uh, oh, one thing you can notice, first of all, is that the HTML file, that's this output file that I'm producing, has appeared. That's one thing to notice. The second thing to notice is I have a stimulus text file here called stimuli.txt, which I talked about in the um, stimulus properties video. And so that is the file that I want to now load in. Notice it's in the same directory as where my R notebook file, that is the RMD file, is. And that is nice. Why? Because um, if I want to see what directory this very notebook file is in, I can use this get working directory get wd command. Let me run this and it tells me where it is. And so it turns out that in, when you're um, in a notebook file, the working directory that you're in is always going to be the directory that the uh, our notebook file, the RMD file is in. And that's nice because that means we don't have to do any extra work to tell R where to find our stimulus uh, stimuli.txt file. Um, all we need to say is, oh, well, it's in the same directory, so all we need to do is type that uh, file name and put it in double quotes and invoke the read.table command. So let's do that. All right. So this is, looks pretty good. We have file name, speaker, gender, voice quality. These are the Anderson audio file names. But there's some strange headers at the top. V1, V4, what is this stuff? And it turns out, so we had headers already that it specified what's in each of these columns. So can we get R to, you know, use these? Um, well, we can find out what um, options we can use of the read.table command by using the help command. So here we have help read table and if I play it then voila this window the help file for read.table comes up and it'll tell us you know how you can use it what are the various arguments you can set so in this case we can see aha header we can tell it ah header is true because the first row we have our first row that has a header there. So that means that um, we can then include um, header equals true in the list of arguments we give to this um, read.table function in R. Um, I'm also going to set another argument. Don't worry about that. I'll talk about it later. But um, yeah, so let me run that. and. Voila, now our headers are being used properly, so that's great. Now I'm going to hit preview again up here so that the help file will go away and we'll have our preview back. And you can see it's been updated with um, our loaded in text file. Um, so one thing is just this kind of object in R is called a data frame. Um, and like we did before, let's actually assign this data frame to a variable. Let's call that sim.info. So we're going to do that. Run this code chunk. Um, note that in this code chunk, I have this pound sign preceding the line inside the code chunk. Um, that means it's commented out. That means R will not run this. It's just um, if I got rid of it, now R would run it. But if I comment it out with a pound sign, then R will ignore that. And that can be useful for, you know, putting in comments about code. Um, all right, last thing I'm going to show is we can extract different columns from the stem.info data frame um, by using this dollar sign and then the header name. So these are the different header names here, right? So to get the speaker column extracted, I can type stem.info dollar sign speaker. Let me run this. And here I get these returned. So S2 through S16. Um, we can do the same thing for gender. I'm going to run the code chunk. 
and um, ah, so something interesting here is I had written previously that uh, you can see in addition to that one, we also have 11 and 21, but since then my screen width has changed. So you can see what these numbers are saying is, all right, this first row of the output starts with the first list, uh, um, list element, which is S2. And once we move to the second row of the output, that starts with the 15th element, S10. So we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So indeed, this is the 15th element in the list. So that's again what these numbers are. And finally, we can also get the voice quality common co uh, column to extract it as well. We can also refer to the rows and columns not by the header name, but by number. So for fun, I'll ask you as the last thing you do here to, road to run the code chunk, well, to run the code chunk below and see what output you get. I'm not going to show that on this video. Now, if I click on preview again, I have everything updated with everything that, you know, I've done in this session with all the output. And so then um, when I have the HTML file in my Google Drive folder that I was showing you, um, this is that most recent version that I just have had. So when I, um, when I open this notebook file again in R, and if I hit preview, it will come up with this, uh, the last version that I had. All right, so that's your first R notebook. Have fun.